Baby, It's Cold Outside, written by Ink in My Heart and on the Page, and read by Eleanor Elizabeth. Summary. A snowstorm is raging, and Peter is there to save the day, until he passes out. Snow. So much snow. Peter wasn't a stranger to snow. He remembered making snowmen with Uncle Ben when he was little, but he had never seen snow like this. It was pouring from the sky in a white fluttering storm and blanketing the dirty streets in pristine white glow. It was the worst snowstorm reported in the last seven years. Cars were stuck in snow banks and sliding onto black ice and Peter had his work cut out for him. He was glad for the built-in heater that Tony included in his suit because he had been out in the snow for hours. He had just finished clearing a little old lady's front stoop of snow when Karen piped up in his ear. Peter, I think it's time you returned home. What? Peter laughed. No way, I'm good. Besides, the neighbourhood is still covered in snow. Your body temperature is getting low, Karen said. You need to get to a warm environment. I'm not even cold. Peter spread his arms. The suit was really amazing. He couldn't even feel the freezing cold snow, and it wasn't like he was shivering. I'll be fine. The loud blaring noise of a car perked Peter up, and he flung his arms out to shoot a web. Besides, we have people to help. A car had slipped on black ice, blocking the traffic, so Peter helped move the car and put some chains on the wheels so that they could drive safely. He moved on to clearing the shop fronts of snow so that their businesses could run for the day, even dropped by his old workplace, Del Mars, to help sweep the snow that had breezed in. He had been given a free sandwich for his efforts. Rescue after rescue, snowflake after snowflake, Peter was being helpful left, right and centre and having the best day. Peter, your core temperature is too low, Karen said. It's time to turn in. Are you faulty, Karen? I feel fine, Peter said. He aimed a web at the side of the building and propelled himself up, landing hard on the roof. His knees buckled and he sunk low into the snow. His vision blurred as he tried to blink away the fuzz that was blurring the edges of his vision. Um, Karen, what's going on? Peter, you must get somewhere warm. The suit's heater is not going to hold out for much longer, and it's not enough to heat your body to the correct temperature. Karen's voice was starting to get smaller and quieter. Karen? Peter, can you hear me? Peter didn't answer. He was too busy falling face first into the snow. Mr Stark? What's up, Friday? Tony asked, pouring Pepper a glass of champagne and himself a whiskey. It was cold, snowing, and the perfect time to snuggle up with his fiance. Karen is reporting that Peter has collapsed, Friday reported. Tony nearly dropped the bottle. What? Is he out in this storm? Yes, sir. He helped approximately 21 people today before his core temperature dropped enough for him to pass out. Is he okay? Pepper appeared in the kitchen, her face drawn with worry. Karen is keeping his heart beating, but cannot sustain it for much longer, Friday said. Tony turned to Pepper but she was already pushing him towards the door. Don't worry, just go get our son. Sprinting off, Tony pressed the triangle on his chest and the suit materialised around his body until he was blasting out the nearest window. Friday, where is Peter's location? Tony demanded. The coordinates appeared on the screen and Tony raced towards them. It took him no more than six minutes to reach his son. He landed on the roof in a spray of snow and kneeled beside Peter. Friday, patch me into Karen, Tony demanded. He gently touched Peter. Peter? Peter, can you hear me? Peter rolled onto his back, but the boy remained unmoving. Hello, Mr. Stark, Karen greeted him. Update, Karen, Tony said. Peter is currently unconscious, sir. He cannot hear you, Karen said. Friday, contact Bruce and get him ready for Peter, Tony instructed as he lifted Peter into his arms. The boy was too limp in his arms, and he wasted no time in blasting them into the air and flying them back to their home. His lips look less blue. Still, they could be a bit pinker. Something brushed through Peter's hair, and he felt himself leaning into the touch. I think he's waking up. Peter, can you hear me? Peter struggled to open his eyes. They were heavier than he thought they would be, and he blinked to shake off the sleep that still clung to him. Mum? Pepper's face broke into a beautiful smile as she looked down at him. Hey, sweetie. What happened? Peter moaned. Do you know spiders can't feel the cold? Tony's voice sounded from his other side. Peter turned his head and blinked at Tony. What? Spiders aren't attracted to warmth, Tony said. They don't get uncomfortable when the temperature drops and they don't shiver. 
They're cold-blooded. Oh. Peter swallowed, and then it suddenly dawned on him. So when Karen said that I was getting cold, you should have listened. Tony levelled him with a stern glare. You should have turned your butt around and gone inside where it was warm. Peter curled up under the weight of the blankets covering his body. But the neighbourhood would have survived, Tony cut off, whilst you got yourself warm again. Peter, you have to take care of yourself, Pepper admonished. I'm sorry, Peter almost whimpered. Tony gently ran a hand over Peter's hair. You didn't know, kid. This is a wake-up call, though. I didn't know, Peter admitted. I just thought that with my healing and stuff that I just didn't get cold anymore. We're going to have to do some more research on you, kid, Tony said. Avoid situations like this again. Thanks for getting me, Peter said. Any time, kid. Tony smiled down at him. Pepper gently let down and brushed a kiss across Peter's forehead. Get some rest. I'll get some soup going. That'll warm you up again. Thanks, Mum. Peter grinned. Hey there, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Ella, and I hope you are having a lovely day today. Oh, it's Figmas Day. What day is it? I don't even know anymore. Six, I think. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like the fic. I asked those of you who were about on the Discord what fandom I should read for today, and you said... I am dad. So here it is. We got some sick Peter and Tony just being a protective dad. What an icon. <laughs> so you can thank KCAT, Son of Fire and Lilith Darkness for this fic coming out tonight. But what did you think of the fic? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. You know how I like to get all chatty with you guys down there. You can also like the video if you liked it and to boost my serotonin. And also subscribe if you want to be notified whenever I make new videos, which, you know, at the moment is every day in the lead up to Christmas because it's Vicmas. <laughs> you can also join the Discord server and come and chat with us all over in there. I am very active on it and it's just been a real fun time. And, you know, as you saw today, you might get sneak peeks at what's going to be coming up each day and... I may ask you guys for things you can suggest fix there as well. It's a good time. I will put the link in the description. But until I see you again, be sure to practice some self-care. Yep, go to bed on time. I know you haven't been doing it because I've, I've seen you in the Discord. I see you up late at night. Go to bed on time. Don't ask me questions about when I went to bed. That's irrelevant. You go to bed on time. Drink your water. Have you, have you drunk all your eight glasses? Have you eaten some of your five a day? I hope you're hitting all five. You better be keeping track. You know why? Because this is a threat. And <laughs> I will catch you guys. A latest.